Malaysia, a booming nation in the heart of Southeast Asia. For centuries, this land was a prime target for foreign powers. But as invaders came ashore, Malaysian warriors struck back, using a secret close combat fighting technique with bone-crushing strikes, lightning-fast takedown, and some of the most terrifying weapons ever invented. Today, this legendary fighting style is known as the martial art of Silat. For centuries, Silat warriors have carefully guarded their deadly techniques and shared them with only those who have proven themselves worthy. These techniques are very dangerous. But now, an American fighter is hoping to unlock the secret world of Silat Gaia and master its deadly fighting style. He'll face brutal tests of faith, terrifying blades, and an all-out battle for survival. For the first time, cutting-edge technology will reveal the science behind each of Silat's deadly strikes and peel back the mystery of this ancient art. Kuala Lumpur International Airport. Malaysian Silat Master Cheku Sam is arriving home from America. Sam is a six-stripe black belt fighter, the highest rank achievable worldwide. He's been teaching Silat in the United States for almost two decades. Now, Sam's come back home with his star student, Joel Champ. He wants Joel to become a top-ranked fighter in Malaysia. Joel is a United States Navy police officer from Chicago. He's been practicing martial arts since he was a kid. I started under the tutelage of my father, who was heavily involved in the martial arts. He started me around the age of eight. At the age of 18, Joel met Chegu Sam, who introduced him to Silat. It was love at first sight. I was so amazed at not just the beauty of the art, but the surprising deadliness of such beautiful, graceful movements. After training in Silat for more than a decade, Joel has earned two stripes on his black belt, making him the highest ranked Westerner in Silat Gayo. Now, Joel has come to Malaysia to try and earn a third stripe on his belt and recognition as a master fighter. I've attained a certain level already and seeking another level in Silat. <laughs> to earn his next strike, Joel will have to prove that he can execute Silat Gayon's deadliest techniques and master its terrifying weapons. Then he'll have to survive a real fight against one of Malaysia's top-ranked fighters. Success will make him the first Westerner to earn third stripe status in Malaysia. But failure will send him and Sam back home to Chicago empty-handed. Today, there are more than a hundred different forms of silat in Malaysia. Silat Gayong is one of the most popular. It is practiced in the country's dense jungles. Here, warriors developed a series of secret combat techniques to help them fight off better armed enemies. Today, Silat's most lethal strikes are still passed directly from fighter to fighter. Sam and Joel head to a secret training ground outside of Kuala Lumpur. Convincing Silat masters to share their knowledge with an outsider isn't easy. It was very difficult for me to get all the teachers to agree to teach Joel, but with my persuasion and explanation to some of my the seniors' teachers, they finally uh, agreed to my proposal. 
Joel knows that he's about to have the chance of a lifetime and that he can't let Sam down. First off, there is no failure. Like, I will not fail. There's a lot of pressure, a ton of pressure. Little does Joel know, his first test is just minutes away. Outside, a group of Silat fighters are preparing an ancient initiation ceremony. Some fighters build their confidence and demonstrate their courage to their teachers by dipping their hands in a pot of boiling coconut oil. It's called mandi minyak. Dalam silat seni gayung ada upacara mandi minyak panas. Selalunya pesilat-pesilat ini menguji keyakinan untuk mencemuh minyak. Dan selalunya latihan-latihan yang mereka telah melaluinya untuk menyapu pada tubuh badan mereka. The fighters believe that if they chant special verses from the Quran, they won't get injured during the ceremony. It's Joel's first chance to be accepted by the Malaysian Silat community. Right now, very anxious. I don't know, almost nobody there. Um, so I'm just really a little nervous. Finally, it's time for Joel to prove himself. The fighter's prayers continue. I can see why it's called boiling oil. Oh, yeah. Sam's known Joel for more than 10 years, but he's never seen him like this. I have never seen him very nervous before, so I can see his, his chest like up and down, up and down. I have to smack his back a little bit. So it's gonna calm him down. The oil has reached its boiling point. And it's time for Joel to prove he can master his own fear. It's Joel's turn. He places his hands above the oil and makes his first dip. Good. Even though the oil stings, Joel doesn't show any pain. Sealot warriors believe that rubbing the oil on their bodies heals old injuries and builds up resistance to pain. Joel goes for his third and final dip. He's proven his courage to Chegu Jaswa. This is so amazing, you know, to be able to come here and, and take part in everything like this. So it's, it's really awesome. But his initiation isn't over yet. Silat training can be painful, and fighters must prove they're ready by enduring the scorch of a flame. Extend the hand, mm -hmm. step forward, mm -hmm. open up the hand. Yeah. With the other fighters looking on, Joel steps up to the fire. He doesn't flinch. and passes his initiation. <laughs> Coming here as a foreigner from the other side of the world and being accepted, it's an honor because now you're, you're not just entering a training center with students, you're entering a family, you're entering a community. Now that he's done, I think I'm ready to reveal some of the secrets to him. Next, Joel's combat skills will be tested as he goes all out with some of Malaysia's top fighters and discovers what it takes to become a true Silat warrior. Today, they said, you have another surprise for you. We're gonna use a machete against your arm.
When many of us think martial arts, we imagine Kung Fu's elaborate hand strikes and spectacular flying kicks. But Silat Gayong is a different kind of martial art. It's known for its close combat fighting style. The secret of a Silat strike is to use minimal energy to cause maximal damage. With 15 years of training in America behind him, Joel Champ is the first foreigner ever to be officially invited to Malaysia to be tested at this level by the local Silat Gayong community. But if he's not able to master them, he won't earn a third stripe on his black belt or be accepted into the Brotherhood of Malaysia's Silat Masters. Joel's trainer will be one of Silat's most respected fighters. Cheko Jaswan is a four-stripe black belt Silat warrior. Joel will have to win Jaswan's respect and approval. Jaswan says he wants to get a sense of Joel's fighting skills. He starts off with a simple test. Using a bamboo rod, he gauges whether Joel has two key skills of a Silat fighter. The ability to hold a stable stance during a fight and endure extreme pain. <laughs> You okay? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Joel survives, but just barely. Oh. Next, he has to show Jaswan his best moves. So far, Jaswan is pleased. Puas hati saya melihat Joel dapat ikut apa yang disuruh, apa yang dikedaki. It's time for Joel's training to begin. First up is a locking technique known in Silat as Sangha Maut, or deadly support. Sam demonstrates how it works. Oh, Sam. The bicep. Grab, strike. Grab him closer to you, become one. Expose the bay, clip it, and push it down. Slightly push forward, push up, and push back. Ah! Now, cutting edge technology is allowing us to take a deeper look at the true power of Sangha Maut and other deadly Silat strikes. Dozens of reflective markers line the body, and infrared cameras track their every strike down to the millisecond in three-dimensional space. Reproducing both fighters perfectly in graphic animation allows us to break down each of their lightning-fast moves and discover what happens inside the bodies of their victims to understand the amazing science of Silat. The fighters first reveal the secrets of deadly support, Strike one is a rapid blow to the enemy's forearm. It aims to fracture the bone. Strike two, the Silat fighter locks onto the enemy's shoulder and pulls back, tearing at the ligaments inside and possibly dislocating the joint. Next, a quick foot strike to the back of the knee brings the enemy instantly to the ground. Finally, a dual-purpose chokehold that compresses the windpipe and clamps down on both carotid arteries. As these giant veins in the neck compress, blood flow to the brain slows. If the technique is successful, the enemy will stop breathing and passes out. Now it's time for Joel to master each of the four key strikes. Jaswan teaches him step by step. Joel quickly finds out that training in Malaysia is as real as it gets. That is no acting. There is no script for that. That is all natural. That's real pain. When he choked me and I was coughing, it was because I couldn't breathe. That was, that was real pain. Joel's hard work pays off.
It's time to move on. The martial art of Silat has been carefully guarded for centuries. Little is known about the origins of most Silat fighting techniques. Legend has it that one of the art's most crippling strikes was inspired by the hunting tactics of big jungle cats who launched their attacks on their prey using both front paws. In Silat, this strike is called Seligi. The purpose of the Seligi, when your opponent attack you, you don't go back, you go forward, attack them at the same time. Our motion capture fighters enable us to break down a Seligi strike pattern and see how Seelot warriors aim their strikes at key areas on the human body for maximal effect. Strike one is a devastating elbow to an area in the abdomen called the solar plexus. Inside, a giant cluster of nerves spreads out like a web across the abdominal diaphragm. As the elbow makes contact with the nerves, it sends the abdominal muscles into spasms and causes the enemy to gasp for air. Strike two, a side chop to the groin that targets the nerves in the groin. The Seelot warrior executes a bone-smashing upward strike to the jaw. The finishing touch is a double-knuckle sledgehammer to the chest. The point of a Seligi strike is to shock the nerves and send the body into convulsions. A hard enough strike may even cause death. There's no body locking, there's no bone breaking, simply striking to humans' nerves. Joel begins learning how to execute a Seligi strike. One more time. This one is hit, 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 hit. Yes. And quickly discovers that Jaswan expects nothing but perfection from him. Oh, wrong. Jaswan shows him again. It is a little bit of a higher speed. You know, you keep up or I guess you get left in the dust. Based on my observation that he just teaches and the student does without question. Back in the States, students ask the teacher a lot of questions. Joel executes a full Siliki. Jaswan's impressed by his persistence. Kita lihat kelebihan Jo adalah untuk mendapatkan sesuatu itu walaupun susah dia hadapinya. The Silat strikes deadly support and Seligi can cripple and even kill. They once helped the people of Malaysia protect themselves from invaders. One of Malaysia's legendary heroes is 15th century Silat warrior Hang Tua who used his deadly skills to defend king and nation. But there's another side to Silat. For Chegu Jaswan and other Silat fighters in Malaysia, their art is much more than a weapon for battle. Memang dalam silat gayung memang permainannya cukup kasar dan dianggap silat seni gayung ni adalah untuk pergi peperangan. Jaswan believes that his faith in Islam provides an ideal spiritual foundation for his training in silat. Silat mengajar kita erti kesabaran dan dari situ kita anggap silat ni cukup penting dan disiplin dari segi solat mengajar kita from the beginning, Joel too was drawn to the spiritual aspect of Silat. The study of Silat is beyond the physical. It's beyond just self-defense. It's self-confidence. It's a, a lot of discipline. It helps give you direction and gives you strength when you need it. Joel has seen the power of Silat in his job with the United States Navy. I deal with conflict resolution on a regular basis at work. The study of Silat helped me maintain my composure, makes me quick, decisive movement, movements as far as like situations that take a calm mind. Sam helps Joel understand the key role that spiritual training plays. 
And tomorrow, Joel's faith will be tested. It's Joel's third day in Malaysia. Joslin is preparing to teach him how to handle Seelot's deadliest weapons. But what Joslin has in mind isn't quite what Joel was expecting. Today, they said, you have another surprise for you. We're gonna use a machete against your arm. Before Joel is allowed to train with real weapons, Joswan first wants to test his courage in the slicing ceremony. Joel will have to endure three strikes from a machete. After seeing him cut that big piece of sugar cane, pieces lopped off onto the ground, you know, that's just not a human or a natural thing that you want to do. Sam explains why. And the purpose of doing this is to build trust and to build confidence. Uh, so, so let's have Joe come over here. Down. Since teachers use real weapons during training, students need to prove that they're not afraid of being harmed. The blade doesn't draw blood. Good. How do you feel? Nervous? A little bit. Uh, <laughs> I was a little nervous going into See, it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You build trust, and then you're confident. <laughs> Good job. For centuries, the rough floor of the jungle has helped Silat fighters hone their sense of balance. Here, Joel will have to master two of the art's deadliest knives. The first is a waved dagger called the kuris. The kuris, I really feel, is, is the heart of the Malay people. Much as the samurai sword is to the samurai, the kuris is the same way to the Malay warrior. The Kuris is designed primarily for stabbing. To make a deadly strike, a Silat warrior tacks from the side and plunges the blade deep into the enemy's abdomen. The reason the Kuris strike is so lethal is that it targets multiple organs in one go. As it enters the lower abdomen, the Kuris targets the liver and lung and sends the abdominal cavity into shock. One of the key targets of the curse is the heart. The curse is then twisted to snap the ribs on the way out. Double damage in a single strike. So you're pushing when the, with the, the blade goes right here to my ribs, and then you push it inside. Even though Joel will never use Silat weapons outside his training, he still needs to master them to qualify for his third strike. One reason Silat warriors are so feared is because their weapons can be terrifyingly tiny. One of the art's smallest blades is called the karambit. It's sized to your finger, the width of your palm, and it has, it'll have a little hook that comes out at the end, which can't be seen. A karambit is so small, an enemy may not know if a Silat warrior is armed until it's too late. When you take the rawness of what Silat is, that is the deadliness of it, because it's what you can't see. It's these weapons that I have all over myself, like little blades that you can't see. You won't even realize it, and you've been cut. The karamba technique may be the most vicious strike in all of Silat. Motion capture allows us to see why. The Silat warrior first swings low and rapidly slices behind each of his enemy's knees. The targets are key tendons and hamstring muscles that hold the enemy upright. The Silat warrior strikes upward toward the neck. A deep enough cut will slice through the jugular vein. 
Next, a knee to the chest drops the enemy's head into perfect position for the final strike. A rapid hook to the left eye socket. In four lightning fast moves, the enemy is blinded, unable to stand, and bleeding out. Armed with a real karambit, Joel needs to be careful. Now, oh, 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 oh. So when you cut, you're, I'm cutting him right here on his thigh. Yes. Okay? So cut here. Cut. Out. Cut the throat. Cool. Knee. And then cut up. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it again. Finally, yeah. he gives a full karambit strike. Yeah. Everything yeah. he's got. Okay. Joswin sees that Joel can handle this tiny blade and execute each slice at its intended target point. Next up is Joel's final weapon. It's one of the most carefully guarded fighting techniques in all of Silat Gaia. In the hands of a master, the weapons of Malaysia's martial arts Silat Gayong can be lethal. Targeting ligaments, the throat, and eyes. But blades aren't the only weapons in a Silat warrior's arsenal. In Malaysia, a traditional form of dress for men and women is the sarong. A long piece of cloth that's wrapped around the waist like a skirt or a kilt. For Silat fighters, a sarong is also a weapon. It's called the chindai. Jaswan demonstrates a chindai attack. The chindai technique is so secretive in Silat Gayong that it's only shared with the most advanced students. Chindai is the uh, Malay traditional technique. It's a simple technique and it doesn't require a lot of energies. And that's why we wait until the student reaches a certain level for us to reveal the techniques of the Chikra Tsindai. So when you, you throw it over the head and you, and you catch, you pull them into you and you do like a, like, like a you, you, that's when you start to like, like strangle, yeah. Yeah. choke. Okay. Now, motion capture allows us to slow down a Chindai strike and see why a simple cloth can be such a terrifying weapon. First, the warrior executes a surprise attack from the rear and wraps his enemy's entire head in the sarong. Then, a twist. As the cloth is pulled tight, it clamps down on both the windpipe and carotid artery in one go. Oxygen and blood supply to the brain are cut off. Now, with his enemy gasping for breath, the Silat warrior pulls him to the ground. The true power of a Chindai strike is not just physical. It attacks primarily around the throat area, so it takes your wind away. And this is one of the things that's great about Silat, actually, is the psychological game that it plays with your opponent. Because I take your air away, and then I just keep going. So it's kind of like, it's like a drowning feeling when you start to panic. And it's that panic feeling that you want to put in your opponent because that's what makes it psychological. Joel works to learn a full range of Chindai strikes. It's the last technique he has to master here at the training center. Jaswan is pleased with Joel's Chindai technique. Joel has now mastered many of Silat's most difficult fighting methods. Deadly support, Seligi, the Kuris, and Karambit. And finally, the surprisingly simple and crippling Chindai. Sam is growing more confident that Joel will be awarded his third strike. But he knows that the last test will be the hardest. Today, in Malaysia's capital city of Kuala Lumpur, you can find a new kind of sila. It's a competitive sport known as Olaraga. In just three days, Joel will face his final challenge, 
he'll have to survive a real fight against one of Malaysia's Olaraga champions. He's excited, but nervous. I have no idea what I'm kind of walking into, but to do something new, I'm excited about that. Sam and Joel arrive at one of Malaysia's top Olaraga training facilities. It's located inside the police academy, Pulapol. Even today, Silat continues to play an important role in the national defense of Malaysia. It's one of the forms of martial arts taught to the country's police force. To help Joel prepare for the fight, Sam is turning him over to one of Malaysia's toughest Olaraga trainers. Chego Kamal is a police sergeant and has trained multiple Olaraga champions here at Pulapol. If Joel wants to survive the fight, Kamal may be his best hope. This is the time for him to see how he handles competition here in, in Malaysia. First, Chego Kamal wants to make sure that Joel is physically ready. Okay. I have no idea what they're going to have me do, but uh, I, I could imagine it's going to be very physically taxing. Hey, Joel, come with me. Joel's still getting used to Malaysia's extreme heat. My hamstrings are tight and sore, my quads are tight and sore. This is just kind of uh, making them scream. This is waking everything up. Okay, Joe. Good job. You do 15 in one minute. Having passed the physical test, Joel gets a tour of the training facility. Here, he'll train for three days with some of Malaysia's top Olaraga fighters. Olaraga is a streamlined form of traditional sila. Fighters don't use weapons, just their bodies and skill. Their strikes can still be brutal. One of the most impressive is a scissor kick takedown. A fighter launches himself at his opponent. While in the air, he wraps his legs around the other fighter's knees, then twists his body as he falls, forcing the second fighter to fall with him. A strike using the hand is worth one point, while a kick is worth two points. A takedown gives you three points. Joel needs to get up to speed fast on the sport's strict competition rules. To the best of my knowledge, they're just going to really go over the rules and regulations. There's a lot of things that I can and can't do, like the different kicking methods and maybe striking methods. He's going to have a difficult time learning the rules and regulation. You're talking about trainers and students who have been trained for five to 10 years, even 15 years. It's probably going to be challenging for him. I hope he will follow the regulation. That's my main concern. Many of the strikes used in traditional silat are not allowed in Olaraga. These include the groin strike and nerve hits of Saliki and the throat squeeze of deadly support. If Joel makes an illegal strike during the fight, he could be disqualified. So every single time they restart, they have to start back again. Yes. This is actually my very first time ever even seeing it done in real time, being able to see how fast these guys move. It was pretty explosive movement, actually. Kamal knows how hard it is going to be to last all three rounds. On his second day at Pulapol, Joel learns the key techniques of Olaraga. 
Yeah, now you. Let's do it slowly. Uh, a blocking tactic. Okay. There is a huge language barrier because my Malay is horrible, but they have to teach me through showing me, get them to repeat uh, their lessons, but I have to be smart with my time because I have a very short amount of time to learn this art. From outside? Huh? From Here. Yeah. Here. 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 Now how about throwing? I'm like only a day away from this final fight. I don't really know how I feel about it yet until I can actually put the gear on and I can actually start to readjust myself into a whole new house. This is just totally different from what I was doing before, really. Day three arrives. Finally, Joel gets to go one-on-one -on -one with another fighter. Kamal is worried about Joel's progress. Joel ni, uh, dia punya uh, kekuatan dia, dia punya segi fizikal dia agak kuat. Tapi kelemahan dia dari segi pengawalan, pelapasan, dia mudah menyuruh. Dia yang ketara, nampak. If Joel doesn't survive tomorrow's fight, hey! he won't earn a third strike on his black belt. Hey! I'm frustrated because I want to go into what I'm comfortable with, and I can't. So tomorrow is going to be, it's going to be a battle. It's fight day in Kuala Lumpur. Finally, Joe will find out whether he has what it takes to become a three-stripe black belt silat fighter in Malaysia. With just three days of training in Olaraga, Joel knows the odds are against him. At this point, I'm just I'm thinking about you know, my Chegu and his direction. I'm thinking about maintaining myself within the rules and regulations of Silat Olaraga. 15 years with me. You have me. Joel's opponent is two-time Malaysian Silat champion, Harmizi. Harmizi's been training in Olaraga for over 10 years. The fight will take place on a regulation Olaraga map. It's similar to a boxing ring, but without the ropes. An eight meter diameter circle marks the fight area. If a fighter strays outside this ring, he'll be penalized. The crowd is eager to see if a foreign fighter can stand up to one of their own. Cheko Jaswan has come to witness Joel's last test. Finally, it's time to do battle. Chegu Kamal will referee all three rounds. Sekarang kita akan menyaksikan pertandingan yang kedua di antara pesilat daripada Pertubuhan Selat Sikayu Malaysia yang diwakili oleh Armizi di sebelah kanan saya, manakala di sebelah kiri saya, Joe. Silat! Silat! Pasang! Mulo! Each round will last three minutes. Hey! Harmizi scores the first big takedown. Sam reminds Joel to stay inside the fighting area. But it's too late. 
The first round is over. Hold my signal. Calm down. Recollect. Okay. Stretch. Sam's worried that Joel is revealing his moves in advance to Harmizi. Now, one thing I see you, when you're doing this, you're giving the signal that you're gonna kick. So who's gonna catch your leg? Don't give him the signal that you're gonna kick. Joel and Harmizi face off for round two. Joel does a better job of staying inside the ring. He lands a one-two combo to the chest. But Harmizi's still sensing Joel's next moves. He scores a second takedown. The takedown has ripped open a giant blister on the bottom of his right foot. Joel's in pain. Joel's trip to Malaysia may be over faster than he imagined. Now, it's Joel's call whether the fight continues. Joel Champ's fight is only half over, but one foot already has an open wound. It's the ultimate test of mind over body. Okay, that's good. That's okay. That's okay. I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight. All right. Let's go. Joel limps onto the mat. The fight is back on. Wallow. There's less than one minute left in round two. Joel's injured, but Harmizi doesn't hold back. The whistle blows. Joel Champ has survived the second round in his battle against a Malaysian Olaraga champion. His opponent, Harmizi, has been relentless. By now, Joel has survived two takedowns, a frontal assault of kicks and punches, and he still has one round to go. My arms are just beat, which you can't see when I, after the fight, I'll roll up my sleeves and you'll see I have like probably six or seven welts on my arms from, from his kicks, yeah. The takedowns have ripped open a second blister on Joel's feet. Harmizi senses victory. He's an animal, actually, so uh, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts, but it's okay. One more round, one more round. But after coming all the way to Malaysia, Joel's not about to give up yet. Joel enters the ring for the third and final round. There are open wounds on both of his feet. Harmizi attacks, but Joel fires back. His strikes are landing. The crowd urges him on. With just seconds to go, Joel executes a major takedown. The final whistle blows. Joel Champ has succeeded. He's survived all three rounds and proven that he can stand up to one of Malaysia's top competitive fighters.
Jones earned the respect of Malaysia's Sealot Masters and the third stripe on his black belt. Chiku Jaswan is holding in his hands a, uh, a black belt with three stripes on it. I can't even tell you at this moment how it feels to stand there in front of them and no one else around me matters. Sir! Scream isn't like a normal uh, combat yell or war cry. It's something very special and very specific to us. It's like screaming out the name of God. Joel is now the highest ranked Westerner in the deadly art of Silat Gayong. Sam's ready to pass the torch. Joel is my best student. Being at the age where I am right now, I want this knowledge to be passed along. I have confidence that he will continue. Chegu Sam has passed on this heritage to me. It's a great honor for me to be a part of this warrior arts heritage from Malaysia. Finally, Joel has been recognized in the birthplace of Silat Gayong. Wherever my life may take me, there will be Silat Sini Gayong. Sir, 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 sir.